Okay, Bisiyata Rashmaya, it is so special to be able to sit with you and to learn together with you. Thank you for joining, whether you're in Eretz Yisrael, whether you're in Chutz Arts, where it is yet Lag Ba'emer, and over here, Lag Ba'emer is just coming to an end, if Lag Ba'emer ever comes to an end. Um, but the main thing is, is that wherever we are, we should be zoche to all the hashpa, to all the light, to all the shefa, to all the incredible bracha that's coming down on this day through the channel, through the yesod. Who famously said, Rabbi Shimon's whole thing is mamish to eradicate all judgment, all harsh severity from upon Am Yisrael, the Klalius, the Pratius, on a collective level, on an individual level. So we should really merit to tap into that light and to experience the nullification of all the challenges and difficulties and concealment and frustrations that we experience in our day-to-day -day and um, in terms of our longer, grander ambition. Hashem should mamash bless us with the light of the tzaddik, with the light of all the tzaddikim, with his light that comes down through these inspired tzaddikim with Hashem's help. So I want to do something a little bit different. Usually Thursday night we have our parsha shir, but I was thinking a lot, what should we do? We have Chavar listening to the shir in Eretz Yisrael. We have Chavar listening to the shir in America, and the parshias are not aligned. So I couldn't really figure out which parsha to do. And so I just decided, let's put the parsha learning on hold until the parshias catch up. And we can utilize this opportunity to learn inyanim shoinim, different inyanim, um, some that are going to be kashur to the time, like now, a couple of weeks before Shavuos, Bez Hashem, we're going to try to spend the next two, three weeks, whatever it is, to try to learn a couple of teachings on Shavuos to help us get prepared. And then after that, we'll figure out what to do until the parashiyas catch up. So with Hashem's help, I chose tonight to learn a teaching from the Ish Kodesh. When the Heli Gepi Asetz Nerebbe, Shus Yagun Aleinu Valkal Yisrael Amin, who's painting I have on my shelf, and he's looking down at me always. And he's looking down on all of us always. What a privilege to be connected to the Sadiq. What a privilege. What a privilege. This tzaddik who lived in that darkness and saw only chesed and revealed HaKadosh Baruch Hu's light. He was living what Rabbi Shimon preached. Imamish from the place of the deepest concealment, from the place of the deepest darkness, he refused to stop believing in goodness of humanity and the goodness of the world and the goodness of the creator and in the ultimate goodness, whether he knew that he would see it or he knew that he wouldn't see it but he believed that it would come. And you and I, Be'ezer Hashem, are part of that final, final generation that's going to usher in that time of chesed. Like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai says about the Zohar Kaddish, Ki b'safra da yifkan be'i min galusa b'rachame. That through the Zohar Kaddish and learning tzaddikim that are based on the Zohar Kaddish, we're going to be zochet to the ge'ula b'rachame with mercy, without any gogumagog or cataclysmic events. Mamash with rachame, just with rachame. So I'm going to share my screen here. Hope you guys can see it. And we're going to take a look at this teaching on Shavuos from the Ish Kodesh, the Siyat Rishmaya. And while we're doing so, Be'ez HaShem, we should also have in mind, we should also have in mind the 45 Sadiqim, Sadiqe Elyon, who were called up last year on Lag Ba'aymer in the Sa'ar and the storm of Meron, Tavshin Pei Aleph. And we need to carry them in our hearts and for our lifetime, at least, I don't know about, you know, the next generation, but for our lifetime, it should be clear to us that Lagba Emer will never be the same. It just can't, can't be, and it won't be. And every time that we dance on Lagba Emer, there's going to be a part of us that's crying and, uh, and the dancing and the crying are going to hold hands themselves. And maybe that's part of the kushya that we are called upon to be Mavarer at the end of time as a nation to mamish find a way of, of Hazayr and Bedima Birina, like Rav Shlomo used to say, Bedima Birina. You know, these two things together, the tears and the joy, the joy and the tears. And the Ishkodesh Mamish lived that. And so this piece is a piece about brokenness. It's a piece about challenge. It's a piece about pain. And, uh, but at the same time, it's a piece about HaKadosh Baruch Hu's love. And so I wanted to Davka choose a piece from the Ishkodesh to start off this couple of week learning period on Shavuos because it does speak to some of that, which I feel all of us are feeling inside, no matter how joyous we are in the Hilula de Bar Yechai, we're all feeling a little bit pained, we're all a little bit traumatized. And so let's take a listen to the words of the Helige Ish Kodesh, The Pasuk says in Tehillim, Davna Melech says, let your kindness come to comfort me. 
like your words were to your servant, referring to himself. Let your mercy come and bring me to life. Because your Torah is my delight. Says the Ish Kodesh. There's a simple understanding of these words. Seem to have, have, be having some trouble with the internet. I apologize. Not sure. Usually it's pretty strong here. Okay. Rabbi Shimon's R is clogging up the connection, you know? It's a the whole Eretz Yisrael is just filled. All the wires, all the, all the, the modems. Our mom is just um, overworked. So he says on a pshat level, what does it mean? What does David Melech mean when he says, Kim as you have said to your servant? When did Hashem say this to his servant? That he's sending him chesed. What's David Melech referring to? Says the Piyasat Snareva on the level of pshat, Davon HaMelech is referring to the communication that HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent the message through the prophets to Davon HaMelech, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu would support him, that he would stay by him, Davon Melech Yisrael Chai V'Kayim, that Davon HaMelech's kingdom would last. And so on a simple level, this is what David HaMelech is referring to. Let your mercy come to comfort me. As you have spoken, to your servant, to your servants, to the Nevi'im that have transmitted that message to me, to David HaMelech. But says the Piyasetz and it's very nice for David. But what's the Pshat for us? Everybody knows Rabbi Nachman of Breslov in Tara Ayin Gimel and Tinyana and Tara uh, the very last lesson of Luka Tamaran speaks about saying to Hillim, not in a dry way like we're reading somebody else's poetry, but in such a way where we're reading it about ourselves and we find ourselves in the Tehillim. So this is true on a pshat level for David, but you and I need a pshat too in this pasuk. What does it mean in our lives? HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't speak to the Nevi'im about me, maybe about you, but about me he didn't. So what does this mean that we're saying Kim Ros Abdecha, what's pshat? Says the says the Rebbe, What does this mean? What is this mean? It's written, says the Tzadik. By Shavuos, by Matan Torah, the whole entire nation sees the voices. They see the sounds and the fire and the sound of the shofar. And the, and, the, and the mountain that's smoking, that's smoking. And the nation sees and they tremble and they stand afar. Perish Rashi, Rashi says, what in heaven's name does this mean? Since when do people see sound? Says Rashi famously, they saw what was to be heard. Something that no person ever experienced in another setting. They saw the sounds. Why was this? Why did a Kaddish Baruch Hu cause for Am Yisrael to be seeing the sounds of Matan Torah? That they see the fire. And they even can see, so to speak, the call shoifer, the, the sound of the shoifer. And they see this incredible thing where the, where the mountain is smoking. There's a reason for that. It's so that they should become filled with awe. Because when you see such a thing, such an incredibly terrifying circumstance and experience and setting and atmosphere, that's going to bring a certain amount of yira to understand the gravity of that moment. Why, why do they need to see the sounds of Matan Torah? How is that going to contribute to the awe in the same way as this incredibly loud shofar blast and the fires and the mountain smoking? Why was that necessary? Says the tzaddik, an amazing thing, it was a beautiful pshat. Perhaps we can say, in accordance with our very limited perception. We know that a Kaddish Baruch who teaches Torah to Am Yisrael. It wasn't just that Hashem gave us the Torah, that Hashem taught us the Torah. I'm sorry, that Hashem told us the Torah. Hashem taught us that. It wasn't just He said it. 
And HaKadosh Baruch who transmitted it, Hashem taught it to us like a teacher. Moish Rabbeinu Lamar Imoyim Kala Taira. Moish Rabbeinu taught them the whole Taira, all the details. Taught us the Ten Commandments, whatever that means. We heard it from Hashem Himself. And the Medrash tells us, Isa, it's brought Amral Hain Hain Va'alav Lav. On every mitzvah saseh, on every positive commandment of the Ten Commandments, Shabbos and Kibbut Aim, and all the different commandments that are positive. They said, Hain, yes. And in all the negatives, they said love. They accepted upon themselves. They had a chavrusa with the Kaddish Baruch so to speak. All of us. Says the Rebbe, very simple. Because the transmission of this, that is, Aseris Hadibris, is the literal essence of Tarsha Bixav. And we know from the Gemara in Gittin, the Gemara in Tamura that he quotes over here, Yudalad Amid Beis, that things that are written, you cannot speak out Baalpe. You need to read them from inside. So Hashem had to show it to them so that it wouldn't qualify and classify as Hashem teaching them in a manner that was Baalpe. So he had to have it sort of floating right in front of their eyes so that it would classify as Devarim Shavik Sav because you're not allowed to teach that outside Baal Peh. Okay, interesting Pshat. But the point that he's bringing out is very powerful. Nesinas HaToyra Gamlimud Shalomar Hashem Imanu. This that Hashem gave us, the Aserah Sadibras, on Shavu is Daika, on this day, HaKadosh Baruch learns it with us directly, Mamish directly. Now, Vihina Besaik Parshas Nasa Pirish Rashi Ala Pasak Rashi comments on the Pasak that states of Boy Moisha Oil Moy Ladabri Itai. When Moisha came to the Oil Moy to speak to Akadish Baruch, to receive commandments on behalf of Ami Israel to then communicate the details of the Torah to the nation. By Yishma Sakol Medabra Ilov Me Allah Khapoiras, Moisha Rabbeinu would hear the call, the voice of Hashem speaking to him from above the Kapoiras, Asher al Arana Edus, which was covering the Aran. From between the two Kruvim, by Yadaber, a love, and those words were being spoken to him. Says Rashi, Midaber, famously again, what does it mean that Akadish Baruch was communicating to Moshe from this place? Kemoi misdaber. What does that mean? Kemoi misdaber. It's not that Midaber, he was speaking directly to him. Mitdaber means it was sort of a natural process, an effect of something else. Not a direct communication. It means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was teaching it to himself. Moshe was just overhearing. We need to understand what's this Indian, that there's a distinction between the day of Shavuos. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu is speaking directly to Am Yisrael, literally teaching them in such a direct fashion that it classified as Devarim Shavik Sav, that you're not allowed to give over Baal Peh. He was literally teaching us. He needed a text because it started, started Shavik Sav. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu created a text in the sky, right? He showed us the letters. He enabled us to hear the sound. But if you hear by Moshe, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is sort of teaching it to himself, and Moshe is overhearing. What's Pshat? In his inimitable fashion, the Heligat Sadik from the deepest darkness of the Warsaw Ghetto is calling out to us, is singing to us. The Rebbe draws a connection between this, that HaKadosh Baruch who's speaking to himself and Moshe is overhearing to the most unlikely corner of Tyra that you and I would, and certainly myself, would really have a difficult time making this connection on our own, maybe some of you, but this is an abstract connection, but it's so brilliant. He says, you no, know, we always need a little Purim in our lives. He says, this is the Nukud, maybe a lot of Purim. He says, this is Mamish the Nukud of Achashverosh. Listen to this. I'll say that in the beginning, the Yibrel Esvali, the Turgamon, Achashverosh didn't speak to Esther directly. He only spoke through an interpreter. Even when he was sitting with her at the Suda, he wouldn't speak directly to her. He would speak to somebody else, and that somebody else would communicate the messages to Esther. 
Chazal tell us, the Gemara tells us that Kivan Shishama Shehi Mizare Hamalucha, when she heard that she was Mamish from Zera Malucha, when Esther tells, divulges where she's from, what house she's from, from the Jewish nation, Diver Elav Atzva, then he said, I can speak directly to you. That means that in the beginning, even though Ahasuerus took Esther to be his wife, the queen, to have Ahasuerus speak directly to him should be like in quotes mark. She wasn't Zoycha, you know, she wasn't Zoycha to such a thing. But on, I guess on a, this worldly level, it's a schus, it's a merit, albeit he's Ahasuerus, right? Maybe you don't want him speaking to you. But she wasn't Zoycha for the king to want to communicate directly to her until he had heard that she had also come from the Zera Hamalucha. Why is this? What was the problem that Achashverosh has with speaking to Esther directly until he has ascertained her essence? That she's from royal essence. What does it make a difference? Well, who cares what she is, who she is? Speak to her. Says the Tzaddik, we need to understand something about Dibur. We know from the Hedek of Hashem HaKadosh that Tzaddik tells us on the Pasuk, Nafshi my soul went out when he spoke, B'dabrei. Says the Hashem, a remez, Shechelek nefesh ha-medaber, Yoytze b'sha shemedaber. Akan l'shen HaKadosh. It's a remez, right? Because it literally means, it's Knesset Yisrael saying, my soul went out when, when Hashem spoke. And now she yatsa bedabroi. It says the Hashem to know bedabroi is talking about the nefesh itself. Now she yatsa bedabroi. Do you know when the Jewish individual or the human speech or the, or the human soul rather leaves? When does a person's soul emerge? Nafshi yatsa, and the answer is bedabroi. When the soul is speaking, when a person speaks their soul emerges in those words. That a portion of the soul of the one who is speaking, Yoytzeh, emerges when the person is speaking at Kanashayne HaKadosh. Rabbi Tzaddik and Sikha Tzaddik speaks about this. And Rabbi Tzaddik says that if you want to know a person's essence, you want to know what a person's about, you have to listen to see what they speak about. What, what's the nature of their conversations? What do they automatically go back to? Again, I, I wouldn't say on the deepest level there is, because on the deepest level, every year should just be speaking about Dveikos and Sichas Chaveirim and the highest thing all the time, right? But on, on a simpler level, right? On a level of the nefesh, you want to find out how a person spends their time, what they're excited about, what they're into. What do they speak about when they get together with people? What's the nature of their conversations? Because nafshi yatsa bedabroi, a portion of the soul leaves when a person speaks. Lachain says the Pius Setzner Rebbe, this is so, if it's true that Dibor is so deep and it emerges from such a deep place. Lachain, Sarich Liois Hishtavos, Etsem Nefesh Hamedaber, Im Etsem Hamestaber. There has to be an equanimity, there has to be an equivalence, a level of equal between the essence of the soul of the one who's speaking and the essence of the soul of the one who is going to be listening. Because otherwise it's not going to match up, all, right? In as much as it's true deeper. If it's going to really, really be speech in a way that emerges in truth and is received in truth, then it has to come out from the etzem of the nefesh of the one who's speaking, and it has to go into the etzem of the nefesh of the one who is listening. Because it's not stop speech, not a name. It's not random. It's a portion of his soul. Whether he grasped this or didn't, but on a very, very high level, and of course, Achashverosh is Hamelech, and Hamelech is Kadesh Baruch, and Esther is Knesset Yisrael. So, on the deepest level, of course, the mashal is mamish, not just the mashal. On the level of Remez, it is the nimshal, as we're going to see. But let's just stick with the Achashverosh level. All the while that Achashverosh did not know that Esther's spirit spiritual essence was aligned with his. So I knew Shalaybavan Shahi at the Malka. It's not just enough that now she's a queen. He needed to know that the essence of her was royalty. He didn't speak to her. 
Because the essence of his soul, he thought, wasn't going to align with the essence of her soul. And the Kivin Shemalchusa, the Arakein Malchusa, the Rikiyar, because we know that whatever goes on down here in Malchus is Mishtalshom, is rooted in and coming from what goes on in the, in the heavenly kingdom. The deepest, deepest, deepest gedula of Moshe Rabbeinu. This is just how it was, even with Moshe Rabbeinu. The Moshe Rabbeinu is the highest tzaddik. I mean, Moshe Rabbeinu, whatever we're singing about Rajbi, Rajbi is Nishmas Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu revealed Teres and Nigler, and, and Rajbi reveals Teres and Nister. Moshe Rabbeinu is Rashi Davis. Masha Hoya Hu. Masha Hoya Hu Shehiya, the Pasuk of Mishle. Moshe is eternal. It's Pashtusa, the Moshe Bechal Dar. Moshe Rabbeinu is the Das Kol Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, Karan Arpanov, Shechina Medaberes Pesach, Groen Neshal Moshe. But with all of this, HaKadosh Baruch Hu needed to maintain a level of his covet where Kedushasi, he says, is Lamalami Kedushasi, even though Kedushim to you, and Moshe was Kedush, I still am transcending, I'm still removed. And therefore, there wasn't a hishtavus on a regular basis between the neshama of Moshe and the neshama of all neshamas, the nishma is called neshama, so to speak, which is HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and therefore Hashem was not able to speak directly to him, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu was only able to go ahead and to speak, so to speak, to himself. And Moshe was able to overhear as a secondary kind of experience. Says the Rebbe, based on this, we have another problem because Aval Srichim Lahav and Haksiv Daber El Bene Yisrael, right? Where the Pasik literally says that Moshe, that Akadish Baruch Hu says to Moshe Rabbeinu, speak to the Jewish nation, M or El Aaron, right? Or speak to Aaron. So, how can you tell me that Akadish Baruch Hu was saying this to himself and Moshe was overhearing? This is literally directed to Moshe. Daber El Bene Yisrael, Hashem is not saying that to himself. Like he might be speaking or reviewing all the other areas of Torah that Moshe was overhearing. I get it. But these psukim are literally explicitly focused toward Moshe himself. So, Eich Efshar L'dabr Zois Bein L'bein Atzmai. Says the Rebbe, an interesting thing. Again, this is all side to the ultimate, you know, it's all introductions to what he wants to say about Shavuos and about the level that we get to on Shavuos and about the level that we need to remember that we carry with us the rest of the year, Be'ezer Hashem, as we'll soon see. Says the Rebbe, answers this question, that just like we know that a Kaddish Baruch Hu created the world from the Torah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu looked in the Torah and created the world, the Pasuk says, and Chazal say, that the Torah was a Kaddish Baruch Hu's material of craft. Hashem used it and he created the world. The Pasuk says, the, the Gemara says in Brachas, the Vitzalel knew how to permutate the letters with which the world was created. And that's how he created the Mishkan, Surasa, the Mashkana, Ke'ain, Surasa, the Bereshis, right? That the whole entire Mishkan was founded on the principal creation of the world. And so Vitzalel had to know the letters with which the world was created, say, for Yitzirah. But the world is created through the Torah. So he says, these commandments to Moshe Rabbeinu were also through the Torah. Because in the Torah, it would be written, that Hashem said to Moshe, speak to Bnei Yisrael. So he says an amazing, brilliant thing. Because he says, how could it be that Hashem was just sort of saying it to himself? He can't have been saying it to himself. But wait a second, is there another option? And indeed there is. What would the other option be as to why our Kaddish Baruch was reading these Pesukim? Well, wait a minute. We know that these Pesukim came long before there was a Moshe, long before there was a Yaakov Avinu and Shvatim, long before Avram Yitzchak. It came long before Noyach and Adam Rishon. It came Mamish 2,000 years before the world was created. There was a Pasuk Dabra El Bnei Yisrael. Good. So the same way HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world using the Torah. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu was learning with himself. He was reviewing the Torah. He was reviewing the Torah. And Moshe Rabbeinu overheard. So it wasn't Hashem saying these things to, them, to himself because it's not relevant. But it is relevant in as much 
as it would be needed for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to review so that Moshe could overhear because again, HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not speak to Moshe directly. HaKadosh Baruch Hu speaks to the etzem of himself, which is Kedushasi Lamala Mekdushaschem, which is on an incredibly lofty level that transcends even Moshe Rabbeinu's Kalim. And Moshe Rabbeinu here is Me'elav, just like Achashverosh, Lahabdo Menelav Abdelaz, it's a crazy comparison, but just like Achashverosh was unable to speak directly to Esther because the etzem of the Melech is removed from the etzem of the Malka all the while that he doesn't know that she is the MS royalty on the level, certainly transcending, but on the level at least of Achashverosh. Nimso we find, Shekasha Lomar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Asatari in Moshe Rabbeinu in Yisrael, that there's a distinction between the rest of the Torah. When a Kodesh Baruch Hu is speaking to himself, he's learning Torah for himself, he's reviewing, and then Moshe overhears to Shvuis, when a Kodesh Baruch Hu mamish taught the Torah in and of himself, to Moshe Rabbeinu together with all of Am Yisrael at that moment and on this day of Shavuos, which we're getting ready to now, Be'ez HaShem, and what, what we've been preparing for, Derech Eretz Kadam L'Tayra, to create the Kli, to be able to be Mechabal the Tayra within it, we have to know that on Shavuos it's something else. Shavuos it's something else. Az lo'i be'in le'be'in atzmei bilvadi be'rehim shamu. No. On Shavuos, with the Asara Sedibris, it's not like it was the rest of the time that Hashem was speaking to himself or learning with himself, whatever it was, and Moshe Rabbeinu overheard. Rak imohem aleihem diber. On Shavuiz, when there's a giloi once more every single year, by Yom HaMahim, Bazman Azeh, like the Kedusha Slevi, the Ma'ari Naim, and the other side you can teach. Then on the day of Shavuiz, it's Mamish Kipshuta, it's happening again. Asara Sedibris, HaKadosh Baruch Hu B'chvayda V'atzmai didn't just teach, I'm sorry, he didn't just say, and he didn't just give the Torah, he teaches it to us directly. Raki Mahem, Ve'alehem Diber, with them, to them. Kivan, why? Shem Abayn Labayn Atzmai Diber, Raki Shalom Abayn Labayn Atzmai. When he was going ahead and sort of learning it with himself the rest of the, the rest of the times that Moshe would overhear and the details. So then he learned it with himself. When HaKadosh Baruch was learning Mamish, the Torah with Am Yisrael, he was Mamish speaking it to us directly. And what does that mean, Chevron? Well, we have to think why the rest of the time isn't HaKadosh Baruch was speaking directly. Because there's not a hishtabas between the etzem hamedaber and the etzem hamistaber, the one that's speaking and the one that's shomea, the one that's listening. But the he on shvuiz goydele skashes bein leveis bein yisbar liyisrael bekabalas hatayra that there is revealed an element of this relationship on shvuiz that's different in a certain way than the rest of the year yom kippur purim included. Shvuiz has a special thing. Shavuos is mamish a special thing in this regard. The tremendous bond that each and every one of us share with the Kaddish Baruch who is revealed on Shavuos in such a way. On Shavuos is the one time throughout the Jewish year. This is a pella. Well, one time, and there are very lofty days, Purim and, and like Boimer, right? And, 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 and Hanukkah, certainly, and Yom Kippur and Pesach Shavuos and Pesach and Sukkot, all the Yom Kippur have their Gilo and Tu Bishvat and Tu Ba'af. Every day has its own special school and its own special Nakuda and its own angle and its own message. But the essence of Shavuos is this that on Shavuos, the etzem hamedaber, the very essence of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, relates to a part of us that can indeed present itself as a Kodesh Baruch Hu's equal. Pile plies. Pile plies. Hashem feels comfortable one day a year speaking directly to us without a metargen, without Moshe Rabbeinu, who himself received it indirectly, without anything in between. Mamesh a Kodesh Baruch Hu b'chvoi deva'atzma ve'yeir Hashem al Sinai, and Hashem's essence becomes implanted within ours and it's revealed that our essence is nothing other than his essence. Not just it aligns with his essence, it is a chilek el mal. And in that kind of context, 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu can indeed speak with us, Mamish. It wasn't just the word that Hashem says, I am Hashem. It's very nice. I am Hashem, right? But say Chazal, it's so deep. Maybe one of the deepest Chazals. Anoichi is Rosh And the Rosh Tevas of Anoichi is Ana, Nafshai, Ksavis, Yahavis. Says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ana, I, my essence, Nafshi, my soul, so to speak. Ksavis, I wrote down, meaning I wrote down my soul, and Yahavis, I gave it to you. That's what's happening on Shavuos. And that's true for the Torah that HaKadosh Baruch was teaching. But it's true about the Kosvim Aluach Libecha. The Pasuk says that HaKadosh Baruch who wants that Am Yisrael should write it upon the ledger of their hearts. Says HaKadosh Baruch you know why I can write down my soul and give it to you in such a direct way? Because Ana Nafshik Savis Yahavis doesn't just mean in the Torah. It means in you. Ano nafshoi ksavis yahavis. Says HaKadosh Baruch the master of the world, on Shavuos it's revealed that do you know what you'll find if you open the notebook of your soul and if you flip through the papers of the diary that goes back before you knew how to write and before you knew how to speak and the deepest, deepest core essence of your development from the moment of conception and development in the womb when HaKadosh Baruch was teaching us through the Malach and the whole Torah, do you know what you'll find on those pages? Anonafshi, you'll find me, you'll find a portion of my soul. Ksabis Yahavis. I wrote that down and I gave it to you. And that's the Gilu of Shvuas of Anoichi Avaya Lekecha, Anoichi Avaya Lekecha. To reveal the Etzem Hamedaber and the Etzem Hashemeya. And there's a direct connection that takes place in such a way that doesn't happen the rest of the year. That didn't even happen to Moish Rabbeinu any other day. It's a pella. Nafshoi kibiyachol nizgalu Yisrael al yedi lima na Torah shalaman Hashem imanu. And therefore, when Am Yisrael are engaged in learning Torah, which of course we are right now, Ashreinu matayv chalkenu bihilula debar yechai to still be connected to that Ar of Rabbi Shimon and to be able to share these moments together. And I appreciate all you coming, all you chaver coming on to, to to join. I know it's a busy day and there's a lot to do, and we're gonna cut. We're gonna try to cut a little shorter today, also, just in realization of, of how busy a day it is, but I just wanted to keep our Seder and to learn this incredible piece with you so that we can realize like Ba'imer as part of the trajectory to Shuiz. She was one of the Shalash Regalim, right? It's, it's a big deal. Sometimes we're so busy preparing for like Ba'imer, we forget about Shuiz, right? Like Ba'imer is part of the Hachana for Shuiz. Sure, like Ba'imer needed a Hachana, right? But like Ba'imer itself is part of the Hachana for Shuiz. So we have to keep our eye on, on that prize, right? Any time that we're learning Torah, this old echo of the time in which HaKadosh Baruch Hu spoke to us straight, Mam is straight from the essence of him into the essence of us, revealing that that's a shared essence, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's malucha is embedded within the essence of our being, that is revealed each time. We sit down to learn the Torah that's extrapolated and it's all included within the Sarah Sadivris, which of course is our 613 letters, and then ultimately rooted, 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 maybe 620 letters rather, Kesar Isios, 613 mitzvah sase, and, and Lois sase, mitzvah Diaraisa, and then the seven mitzvahs Drabana. And then ultimately folded into the first two Dibras, Anoichi Hashem and Loyi, which all the Tzadikim say, Anoichi Hashem is the root of all mitzvah sase, and Loyi is the root of all mitzvah Lois sase. Anytime we get down to learn this Torah, we sit together to learn. That's what's being revealed. Is the memory, is the re-experiencing of that time that our essence was shining so incredibly purely with shlemos that a Kaddish Baruch Hu could speak directly to us. And then it gets covered over, but we know it's there. And on the day of Shavuos, it's revealed in a way that's so accessible on Shavuos night, and everyone can stay up, the men and the women, makes no difference. Make an effort. It doesn't have to be the whole night. It should be a night of learning. At least it should be, at least maybe at most, it should be a night of Tehillim. 
And for those who say that the Tikkun, like by Hasidim, Tikkun al Shuas, it should be a night of mamish rejoicing with the all of Torah that you get to experience when you do the Tikkun. And if you're choosing to sit in the way of Oikah Harim and just sit with one Gemara or with one uh, Parak in Tanakh or with one uh, piece in, in, in one of the Svarmak Doshim, mamish. Mamish, you can feel that Hashem is speaking to me. This is all I want. All I want is to be bound up with the Torah and the experience of calling Hashem's name, which all the tzaddikim described about Tanya, Rabbi Nachman, Yerganaleinu, and other tzaddikim. But this is what it means to learn Torah. It says, Kaira v'shoyne. It means he's, he was reading, he was learning, but Kaira means to call. And the Torah is Shmois of Shalak Kodesh Baruch, it's Hashem's name. And every time we learn, we're calling his name and we're calling him to us in the way of essence, just like it was. On the first night, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu descended and gave us the Torah Kedosh, when Shavuos, that becomes reawakened each moment that we sit and learn. The Nanny finishes, and this is why I wanted to choose this piece, because all of us on this day of Lag Ba'emer, again, as joyous as it is, and as joyous as it was in Baruch Hashem, we only heard good news this Lag Ba'emer, Chaz De Hashem, Chaz De Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us a gift. But all of us are still carrying the trauma of one year ago. And all of us are still trying, like we said in the beginning, a little bit there's, there's, there's dancing, but a little bit there's crying also. And so says the Rebbe, from the depth of the Warsaw Ghetto, from the throes of, of death, Mamish, and the jaws of, of, of terror, says that Sadiq, and can you hear his voice, his sweet voice singing to us? That mamish, the dinim, and the harsh judgments are awakened. Al Yisrael and Am Yisrael, the kashish Yisrael. And it's very difficult for our Kodesh Baruch Hu to save Am Yisrael. Whatever this means, we can't grasp it. But it's true. There's a midas hadin. And that moment, az megalu hu Yisbarach has hasmusay. And that moment, what we're davening for, and what a Kodesh Baruch Hu does all the time, and we're just not aware of it, because when there's a, a din in the world and it comes chas v'shalom, to actualization as it did last year and as it's done, chas v'shalom, you know, and, it, and we shouldn't hear any more stories over the past couple of weeks and months and past few years, where it comes to actuality. So that's one thing. We see Midas Adin. But the Pasuk says, to the one who does wonders, alone, says the Medrash. What does this mean, alone? Of course it's alone. What, we had a have a mean Hashem is like collaborating with somebody else? Hashem is alone, says the Medrash. That's not what it means. Alone doesn't mean that we're reaffirming this, that a Kaddish Baruch who does Nisim by himself and not with Chas V'shalom, any other Chas V'shalom, any being. It means alone without you knowing. That's what it means. La'oisin flows, gedoilos, levadai. What do we know how a Kaddish Baruch Hu is, is, is getting rid of the Kitrugam on Am Yisrael all the time? It's not natural that the world should stick together, to be cohesive. It's the nature of the world to break apart, mamish, to fall apart and to die and to wither and to, and to fade. Mamish, this, that the world is functioning and that a full 24-hour day period can pass where we can sleep at night calmly with quiet and safety and that we can experience a beautiful day with all the kids and bonfires and running here and there and playing in the park under the under the dark blue beautiful Yerushalayim sky and the weather should be perfect and it should just be a picture perfect day it's pili plois you know how many how many dinim HaKadosh Baruch was busy clearing up on his own what happens when that happens what's bringing about this hamtakas hadinim this sweetening of those judgments says the Piyasetzner as megalu hu yizvarech esas et es atzmusay. Hakadosh Baruch Hu is revealing His essence. Vaz in kol mekatrig yachal katrig, and that's finished. That's it. When Hashem reveals that level of the of, of mercy, of irachamim, that the 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 atik yoyimin, the gilui of keser, that the highest highest realm of chasadim gemurim and rachamim gedolim and rachamim rabim, then the kitrugim can't open their mouths. 
Like it says about the way in which a Kurdish bar who got rid of Mitzrayim, Hashem says it's me. I came down, I need Loy Malach, I need Loy Saraf, I need Loy Loy Shliach. It was a Kurdish bar who bechvoid of Atzmi. Ah, a Kurdish bar who's revealing his I need Loy Shliach without any go between. Guess what? That's it. It's a, it's game over. It's game over. Lachim b'shvuis zman kabbalah satayra shvuis, which we're coming to now, the time to be mekabel the Torah, the time to be mekabel Yiddishkai. It's not like simchas Torah. Simchas Torah is mamish a simcha over the Torah. Shvuis is much more. If you could say, it's much more than that. Shvuis is 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 the celebration of the Torah as foundation for Jew. It's right? something else. It's not just the seam of the term. We love learning and we dance with our Gemara Baba Kamas. Shavuos is Yiddish kind. It's, it's the whole thing. It's the whole, it's not just the Torah that we learn, it's everything in Yiddishkeit that's sourced in the Torah that make us the Amanivchar, it's something else. Because otherwise, like what, what, like we have some Torah, so what Shavuos? Shavuos is something else. Shavuos is Mamish, a celebration of Yiddishkeit. It's a celebration of Eretz Yisrael. It's a celebration of the Tzaddikim. It's a celebration of Shabbos and Shemitah and Yoival. It's a celebration of all the different mitzvahs, Tzitzis and Tefillin and all the Yom Tovim. Shavuos is Klali Yisakal. It's everything that Tzaddikim says. Shavuos is everything, contains everything because it's a celebration of the Torah, which contains everything. And so when it comes this day of Kabbalah Satayra, Bachin Tamid Keshalayim Nim Torah, he ace Yeshua. At that moment, we're drawing on the initial Gilui of a Kaddish Baruch Hu giving Am Yisrael a sampler of the Aseris Adibris, the core of the Torah that emerged from Hashem's essence. That happens every time you learn. Pele. To Gilui Atzmos, the Etzem of a Kodesh Baruch who's speaking to the Etzem of Am Yisrael, the Chelik of the Kamimal is revealed. The Ein Mekatri Yochalishlet Oz Chas Vachalila the Yisrael, and at that moment, the Dinim, the judgments are sweetened, and the accuser is unable to open his mouth. Kivin Shuhu Yis Baruch Medaber Imanu, the Etzem Anoichim is galat, because at that moment, the Kodesh Baruch was Malam the Torah la Am Yisrael straight directly. And he reveals his essence. It was my essence, says Hashem, that I wrote down and I gave to you. And the essence of Hashem as etched within the deepest core of our being is revealed and emerges. Says the Tzaddik, but this will finish. This is Pshat in Davra Melech's Pasuk that applies to each and every one of us, not just on a Remez level, on a Pshat level, the way that we should read it. Pashif Shat means again that David Amalek is saying, let your kindness become revealed to your servant. Sorry to console me, as you spoke to your prophet, as you spoke to the Nevi'im about me. Says that Sadiq, no, means something else for you and me. Do you know when your chesed is revealed? Do you know when your kindness comes to come for me when I sit down with a safer? And when I come to Shavuos and I experience the Shavuos night and you're half asleep and you're five coffees in and your mom is dozing and you, and you lay your head down and maybe you fall asleep during Rus, but you feel so bound to the Torah, you feel so kashur to it, your, your, your soul is yearning to encompass this revelation to be a yid mamish to be a yid but ms which is shvuas night we're saying let your kindness come down and comfort me do you know why because at this moment is a revelation of the way in which that you speak directly to me without a shliach, without anything in between. Straight, straight, straight. And that's the end of the Pasuk. When does that take place? When we sit down to learn, which is a reawakening of the initial teaching, of the initial Sheer Klali, that a Kaddish Baruch Hu gave to Am Yisrael directly, that echoes again within each and every one of us when we sit down to learn. And certainly when it comes to Shavuos, when we re-experience the Gilui of Etzem, the Anoichi of Anon Nafshis Ksavis Yahavis, the Atom Daber Eli. 
So we perceive a Kurdish Baruch who is speaking directly to us. So give us, a, give us a blessing. We should be zaycha to engage in Torah in such a way where not only we believe this, but we feel it. We feel this, that there's a real revelation of Hashem's essence, and there's a revelation of our essence inside of us. And the Ezra Hashem, when we're coming close and we're marching to Shavuos, this is part of our preparation to begin yearning for this, to begin longing for this. The learning of Shavuos is not like the learning the rest of the year. It's just not. And in Eretz Yisrael, it's a very short, short Shavuos because you're up at night and then you're, you know, you're sleeping in the day. And then before you know it, Shavuos is over. Mamasha takes hachana, preparation, plan it out properly. Where are we going to learn? When are we going to learn? Have a little bit of a shorter suda, maybe even in the nighttime, so that Mamash, if you're saying the tikkun, you could get through the whole thing finally one year. You know, Mamash, give yourself enough time and it's a tavikamashvala not to drink wine, even though it's a yantiv suda, but it makes you very tired. It, all this stuff is practical achanas, spiritual achanas, which is what we're doing. And Bezer Hashem, the next couple of weeks, we're going to learn more about Shavuos together in preparation. I'm sure all of us are learning on our own. And uh, in that way, we should be zeichet to this giloy of a non nafshik savas yahavis, of this etzem of a Kaddish Baruch whose dibor being revealed and coming into the essence of our Shemia in such a way that all the dinim should be sweetened. And Am Yisrael should know and realize, just like the government is falling, not that there was a government, but there was a government, because it's Mamish Kaddish Baruch who's running the world. That's clear. That Mamish ain lono amilisha ain ela alavinu shabashamayim. We have to daven for the world. We have to daven for Am Yisrael and let all judgments be sweetened we should only hear rak visuris taivas bezer hashem only good news thank you so much for joining and we're going to cut a little bit short tonight but mamish what a privilege to learn these words with you and um ashrenu ashrenu should hold on to the light of the tzaddik bezer hashem and all the tzaddikim thank you Chever, for joining for those of us in chutz la'aretz and in eretz yisrael we could also still holding on to it ashrenu ashrenu have a wonderful, wonderful day. And Bez Rasham, looking forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. All the best. Thank you.